Hey everyone, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we are doing another Storytellers here in the Gunnison Valley. I have another one coming up in May, and uh, we'll share a little more information with you on that a little bit later. I have some guests here with us, but before we get into those guests, I wanted to tell you a few things about why we're here and what we're doing. Uh, this is co-hosted by the Ice Lab, the Western Central SBDC, that's the Small Business Development Center, the Gunnison Country Chamber of Commerce, and the Crested Butte, Mount Crested Butte Chamber of Commerce, as well as Colorado Lending Source, and uh, when we work in creative or work in creative subjects up in Crested Butte, we also have support from the Crested Butte Creative District and uh, Startup Colorado. So, uh, the Crest, if you don't know, the Western Central Small Business Development Center supports small businesses with free consulting services. So, if you have a business that already exists and you need some help doing that, uh, you can talk to the Small Business Development Center free consulting in all sorts of areas of expertise. And uh, if you have a business idea, you can also develop that. Uh, our sponsor, also the Ice Lab, uh, with the Accelerator and Incubator programs. We have an outdoor accelerator coming up, uh, starting here shortly. Uh, and then we also have a regional accelerator that will have a trout tank coming up in June, and we'll tell you about that at the end as well. Uh, co-working space as well. We're actually featured in the Ice Lab uh, today, right now, upstairs. Some folks are co-working in the back. Hopefully we won't be too loud on them, and hopefully they will be polite and kind and sweet to us. And, uh, and Colorado Lending Source does unique lending, so if you're finding that you're struggling to get a conventional loan, um, look to Colorado, Lend Colorado Lending Source. Uh, they're unique to Colorado's startup industry, and uh, they do microloans from 5,000 all the way up to loans of 5 million. So talk to them, they are one of our sponsors as well. Uh, this is probably about our eighth storytellers, if I were to guess, somewhere in that nature. We've interviewed companies from the Gunnison Valley, uh, Proas, which is women's hunting apparel, Romp Skis up in Crested Butte, they make skis right here in our valley, Tassanog Farms in CB South, uh, Oveja Negra, we did one over in Salida with the company over there, they do bike packing, really cool stuff. Uh, acclimate, of course, everybody knows Acclimate, probably sends them off to family when they're coming from low elevation so they don't suffer and make your life hard. Um, Eddie Line Brewing, which was a really fun interview with Brian England, who was the CEO at the time and is now the owner of the two in Buena Vista. And Pinto Barn, which is the company that uh, works on Don't Go Nuts. It's mm. a company that works on uh, allergen-free sort of uh, bars that are extruded out of a machine. I mean, they're handmade. Um, <laughs> but they have an extruder over there and it came from a uh, reactivity from uh, from some of the members of the family. So now they make these cool things right over there in the industrial district in Salida. And we did Castle Creek Guitars with Kent and Brian Howe. That was a lot of fun. Those guys are great uh, supporters of the community and music here. And Montana Rums was one of the other ones we did. And we had a good, uh, really great conversation with Karen Hoskins. So now uh, we're going to have a unique format for this one where we, we've actually brought in someone from campus from Western Colorado University and someone from town. Uh, that, and that is Miss Kelly Osnes. And I'll let you two please introduce yourselves. Great. Why don't you go first? All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I am uh, Craig Beebe, Assistant Director for Career Services at Western Colorado University. Uh, graduated uh, from Western myself. I, I was uh, originally from Milwaukee, grew up mostly in Denver, okay. came here for college uh, back in the day and uh, loved the Valley, but uh, needed to uh, expand a bit after school and, and went away to grad school. Worked for many years uh, down in New Orleans and, and Tallahassee, Florida, and um, had an opportunity about a year and a half ago to go anywhere in the world I wanted to go. Wow. And I said, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's got to be Gunnison. Oh, so, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I moved back, uh, with, actually at the time, without a, officially without a job. But um, yeah, I moved back in uh, December 2017 and uh, started back at Western last January. And, uh, loving, loving my work, loving being back. That's great. And I missed, what was your degree? Uh, so degree here was in psychology, okay. uh, master's degree in educational administration. I'm actually currently working on a uh, PhD, uh, allegedly, um, writing a <laughs> dissertation uh, at Florida State University. Nice. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like your dissertation has mostly lorem ipsum in there. Right? <laughs> That's right. Not, not a whole lot of filler. <laughs> That's right. Cool. Welcome home. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back. That's a great story. Thank you. And ma'am, who are you? Um, Kelly Osnes and co-owner of Treads and Threads with my husband Chris. Um, we have owned it, we celebrated 20 years last year, last June, and uh, wow, what a ride it's been. It's, it's funny because I feel like if there's been a mistake you could make in business, we've made it. We just tried <laughs> not to make it twice. That was our success. Um, this community has been so good to us. Um, so Treads and Threads is an outdoor store. Uh, we just focus on um, shoes, clothes, accessories, packs, things like that. Um, and we love it. We have really enjoyed it. So I moved here 28 years ago and uh, 
right away got involved with the Art Center and Son of a Gun and all the different things in the community. <laughs> and um, Celeste and I always talk about what we love about this community, and it's the people. It's the people first, and then it's the beauty. Mm -hmm. It's a place where um, I love the pace here. I love that you can do several things in one day, and you're not having to spend all your day in the car. Or, and so it's, it's a wonderful place to be, and we're so thrilled to have our business here. That's great. Yeah. I saw a meme to, uh, that said, uh, I don't just do something uh, wrong once or twice. I do it at least five or six times. <laughs> and I said, well, that's me because I'm a perfectionist um, <laughs> doing things wrong. So 20 years uh, right. now for Treads and Threads. Right. Uh, your husband said that you are officially two-thirds owner of the business and one-third owner of, and he's only one-third. Is that true? Uh, no. Yeah. I always say he's 51 and I'm 49. Uh, if I tell the, the staff to do one thing and he says something else, I always say, do what Chris says. <laughs> that's really interesting. Yeah. He, I, I think he does that very quietly. Yeah. Yeah, for safety yeah. reasons. But I'm going to jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not legal counsel. Um, but one of the other honors that I think we should recognize is last year honor, honored by the chamber membership uh, by the community for being business of the year, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, that's such an honor when we're um, voted that by our peers. And, you know, one thing Chris and I really focus on, I mean, we happen to sell gear, shoes, clothing, when I say gear, backpacks and stuff like that. But our main thing is service. We want to be the experts in what we do. We want to really focus on, um, you know, when you come in, we've got the knowledge base. We'll fit you, we'll help you, and that's that's our thing. So to get that award really meant everything to us. That's great. Yeah. And I can uh, personally attest to the service. Treads and threads, <laughs> treads and threads. Nice, <laughs> nice. socks, all those things. Don't and, show us anymore. Uh, we, we have a picture. <laughs> well, that's actually it. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that picture. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's one of the things that always gets me with treads and threads. I walked in looking for a, a specific brand of something, and and price point of that was just a tough one. And it's not you. It's right. everyone. It's an expensive brand. We won't right. say what it is. It starts with an S and ends with Martwool. <laughs> uh, fill in the blanks and your staff was great you know they yeah. I, I said well what are you doing with this and I said well here's my application for this I was like sitting on couches and talking to people uh, but also using it outdoors because I don't like right. to change clothes and worked me into it. a really great uh, I don't want to call it a secondary brand but an, an alternative right and it's been great and it oh, saved good. me a bunch of money and like I've been completely like stoked about it oh, good. and I would have dropped good. twice as much money for you all to spend on your things but sorry about that <laughs> Maybe talk to your staff about actually keeping me on the high-end products. Hey, you know, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. At good. the end of the day, honestly, and this is our philosophy, if we have served our client, yeah. we've done our job. Sure. So if that's if that's what you needed that day, yeah. perfect. We'll we'll make money just by helping you out. Right. And, so. and, you know, from <coughs> my standpoint, it's not about the dollars. You know, they're not trying to just capture dollars right. in the right. store. Uh, they're, they're trying to provide me service. And so that's why I go in and that's why... I, custom ordered boots and all that stuff. So Perfect. It's a great thank you. So thank you for that. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Um, I alluded to this earlier, and I just want to kind of get into a little more detail, but we're going to talk about a business, a business that's actively engaged the campus community and, and students right. in employment positions, and then someone from campus uh, that's in career fairs and uh, career services, mm -hmm. uh, and talk about specifically about maybe what, what campus is looking for out of community and what community wants out of campus, you know, that it's not meant to be this castle up on the hill that we should have a lot of crossover. Mm -hmm. right. And here we are, and if you don't know, the Ice Lab is on campus. It features the uh, it features the Ice Lab. It used to feature the Small Business Development Center, and that's a little bit in flux, and maybe it comes back on here. Uh, but it's meant to provide that connection, that conduit between, or maybe that meshing in between those two entities. And I think that's one of the greatest things about this community is that we have this <coughs> campus. It adds mm -hmm. a, an obvious dynamic to our community that is missing in other West, Western communities. Not all of them, a lot of them have their own, but you know, if you think about Durango having Fort Lewis and, and um, Grand Junction having Mesa, both obviously much lesser universities than the one we're at today. <laughs> Saying that very <laughs> safely, in case security's outside. Thank you. <laughs> Shameless plug there, got away with that one. But that adds a dynamic that I think we appreciate. Maybe we don't appreciate yeah. it at 2 a.m. sometimes on a Tuesday night. Uh, but in general, I think it adds a vibrancy that we need and a youthfulness to our community that we can all use Absolutely. In, that, in that. Agreed. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the business, and we've heard a little bit about that you've been here for 20 years. Uh, right. but tell us maybe a little bit more about um, when we talk about engagement, I do want to talk about some of the standard ways of engaging students. As a, I own my own business here and I run nonprofits here, I've hired Western graduates. I've hired Western undergraduates. I've had 
multiple interns, interns that have turned into VISTA members, if you're familiar with that, or the AmeriCorps program, so uh, paid right. positions. And then one of the Western MEM students uh, eventually took my job as an executive director for a nonprofit. And I think that's a great way for, to kind of work in, right. build that really great resume, did a lot of the grunt level groundwork um, for our organization that moved up. So I think those are kind of what we think about maybe as the standard uh, ways of engaging. And I want to hear about some of the pros and cons of that. Um, but I want to hear also about maybe we'll get into hopefully the softer parts of like, what are we doing to retain students? And what does our community do to play that role? And how does Western try to actively engage students to stay here? And what's the role of, of people off campus? So anyway, let's start with, talk to us about interns, jobs, any of those things that you've done with students. We always try to have um, one to two college students on staff. And it's really to our benefit, as well as the students' benefit, because then we have, you know, um, knowledge of what's going on, like what their schedule is, what's happening on campus, um, what the trends are, what they're looking for. And so one of the things I would like to really encourage businesses is when you hire a student, realize that they're not going to be the nine to five person. And also they're gonna have different schedules because they're gonna have a term paper due, they're gonna have midterms. So work with them. We've we've had businesses tell me, well, they're not reliable. No, they school's first, their job is second, mm -hmm. as it should be. And so we work with them on that. Um, and they really appreciate it and they work really hard. Um, and then we get to know about the fun things happening on campus. And then they wear our product around campus and say, mm. they go, oh, where'd you get those vans? Well, I got them at Treads and Threads. I work there. So it's, it's really worked well for us. Good. And, um, yeah, we're thrilled to have just the youthful energy in our store. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And, and they get, and, you know, we talked about this, I think, offline before we actually started formally with uh, storytellers, of, you know, the experience that they can get in a place like yours versus the the other any other right. job and I don't want to characterize what those could be but you know I, I worked in restaurants a lot in right. my university time which spanned six years <coughs> for only a bachelor's degree um, I had really great summers and but I worked for an engineering firm during that yeah. time too and I was getting a degree in biology I was thinking about going into uh, engineering school I got a D in Calc 2 and that kept me from getting into the engineering school and it was the best thing that ever happened to me oh wow um, because I'm not supposed to be an engineer <laughs> but but that engineering experience was really valuable for me. I worked in the field. I worked with my hands. I worked in the office. I worked across the spectrum of that business and got to see all of that. Yeah. And I think that's missing sometimes, you know, if you just come out and, you know, wait some tables, um, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Waiting tables is really good for per interpersonal and communication, all that stuff. I, I found that time very, very valuable as well. And it's a great skill to step back into when you're making transitions. But you miss the whole like, what is high-end customer service? What does that look like? What's it look oh, like? Oh, man, we will train you, believe yeah. me. And my husband's a real stickler, as am I, about service. And, you know, what's really cool, We've some of the college students that worked for us have worked with Chris in the um, finance department or helping build the budget or um, helping do the buying or helping do the merchandising. We try to match them with their skill sets. So when they come in, we're not just, you're not a T-shirt folder. Right. You know, what do you, what do you aspire to? What are you sure. interested in? Do you want to help me with the social um, marketing? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And um, so we try to plug them in with their interests. That's great. And uh, it's worked out really well. Good. Now, how mm -hmm. big is your staff? Uh, right now, I think we have nine people. Okay. And so. one or two are undergrads? Currently um, active in school? Right now, Chris, how many do we have? Just one college student at the time? We have one, yeah, two high school. Right, and um, and it, it fluctuates, it varies. Now, Shelby, who's with us right now, has been with us for um, over a year, and we're she's awesome. We're going to keep her until she graduates. We're going to try to help her flunk a couple of classes. To <laughs> stay longer, but... Oh, please don't. <laughs> I was going to say, I know a guy, but apparently he doesn't want that. <laughs> no, not really, but she's... Um, most of them that we've had have been spectacular, and some of them feel like we're a little hard on them, yep. but I feel like that's my job. I want them to be excellent. So when they leave, they're not just somebody leaning on a counter. They're somebody that has learned um, a <clears throat> skill on how to work and work hard and have that good customer service. So we do demand a lot, but we also treat them like family. So oh, That's a great balance, right? I mean, a, a part of this is when they leave here, do they leave with real skills? 
Right. And to leave with a really good letter of recommendation. Right. That is way different from the one that somebody just hit copy and paste from some other letter of rec and you can tell. Right. You know. Exactly. But you want that. Exactly. And I, even with interns that I've had on campus, uh, Brooke Moran has sent me a couple, and Dr. Brooke Moran, I should say, and, um, and I always kind of like, offline, like, hey, um, eh? Or eh, you know? And like, she'll tell me, she'll be like, no, like, this is one of our top notch. Right. Like, take this person and they will run with it. And uh, his name right. was Andy and he worked for me and he was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so let's switch over and talk maybe from the campus hat, you know? So mm -hmm. that sounds like if you could place somebody in a real situation in the Valley, I'm imagining mm -hmm. that's hitting on a lot of real positives for you. Mm -hmm. um, and tell us about, you know, what campus is looking for from the career services perspective. Yeah, so uh, we know a, a couple of things about <clears throat> college students. And, and one is that students who work while they're in college, first of all, they, first of all, many of them need to work. Most of them need to work. They need to pay the bills. Um, but we know that the students who do work actually tend to do better um, academically. Oh. They tend to be retained um, at higher rates uh, at the university and graduate at higher rates. And that, those are all positive things. Um, the reality, especially in, a, in, in the Valley here, is that it's not always possible for a student to find a job that's going to perhaps put them in a position to develop like real professional skills for after school. It's just not, it, it, there's always a potential in any job, I think, to develop those skills, mm -hmm. but just it, it takes the right supervisor, it takes the right culture in a, in a business. Sometimes students just have to take a job. Mm -hmm. And this is part of why uh, also internships are so important. Um, to Western, and this is a big push uh, since I came back about a year and a half ago, especially um, that we've been pushing really hard to develop internship relationships with employers um, in the Valley, especially uh, for the students that want to stay here over the summer, for example. Um, but internships are an opportunity, you know, in addition to let's say part-time work and coursework uh, for students to get out there and develop those skills in their particular field. Um, so I would emphasize that both, I mean, a part-time job for many students uh, can be just as valuable as an internship. Uh, and that's just the fact, I think. Um, students are gonna develop real skills. What I hear Kelly saying is that these are, you know, a student who comes in and maybe part of their job is facing product and, and cust basic customer service, but if they're also getting an opportunity to talk about the finances of the business and to talk about uh, maybe marketing strategy and public relations and these kind of things. Those are big picture things that are gonna help students um, develop. And that doesn't matter if it's an internship or a part-time job. That, those are real life skills that are gonna help a student to speak more uh, intelligibly in an interview um, about what they have learned through their college experience. So <clears throat> part of our value uh, at Western on a very practical level is simply get students engaged. Um, if that's part-time jobs, Great. That's why, just as by way of plug, um, on April 10th, we have a, a job fair coming up, a summer job fair. This is, it's just a free, simple, easy job fair. This is not about internships or careers. This is just to help students who are sticking around for the summer to find part-time work um, up and down the valley. We actually have some employers from outside the valley um, attending as well. And, uh, th and that's the purpose, because we know that students who get engaged, uh, that's gonna be good for them. We also know, and Kelly spoke to this a, a bit, which is that these students become advocates for, for businesses. When they right. work at a place and they yeah. like working there, they become advocates for those businesses. Right. Um, and there are a lot of businesses. I mean, I tell you, Treads and Threads is, is a little bit unique in the Valley. I mean, I can think of some others, Power Stop and a few others, that, um, that are sort of unique in the sense that students like they walk around campus and they talk positively about these businesses. Um, there are a lot of businesses in Gunnison that students couldn't tell you, they've never heard of it, they don't know huh. where it's located, they've never been inside. Um, and I'm not saying that just employing students is the fix, but that's certainly a part of it. If you have a student on campus talking, bringing their friends in, you know, while they're on a shift to come shop around or letting their friends know that there's a sale going on, um, I think there's a lot of positives both ways. Yeah. for businesses and for um, the university. Yeah. yeah, hopefully that's the best marketing you can do on campus mm -hmm. is having someone right. be that advocate for you. Yeah. Uh, so if we were to talk about, you've uh, worked in other campuses. Mm -hmm. uh, you said Florida State and? Colorado State and Loyola University New Orleans. Okay, and yeah. New Orleans and similar positions on those campuses. Uh, used to work in, in housing and student leadership. This is a 
this is a this is a change for me. Cool. Career services is a new direction. Yeah. Okay. Good. So an opportunity to just see it through a different lens. Yeah. Um, you know, we we're dealing with I think a very small community here. You know, yeah. largest employer is probably Western. Or, yeah. And then secondary and then the private sector it's got to be Crest Butte. Probably Crest Butte. Right. Yeah. Um, a lot of entry level stuff at Crest Butte lift ops mm-hmm. and all those things, which a lot of students that come here I would assume are coming because we have a ski area and I think it's yeah. probably a great thing and Hartman Rocks and all kinds of good outdoor rec. Um, what's what do you see that's unique about this community compared to those other campuses that you've worked at even if you have to see it from the lens of uh previous housing you know roles yeah that's a interesting question i on the one hand um those other places are all bigger cities fort collins is probably the smallest of the of the three of them um that i've been in before but certainly one difference is that when you come to gunnison as a new freshman. And this is the thing that I think it's easy to disconnect from as a person that's lived here for a while, even myself who came as a student to Western from the Front Range. But I lived here for a while, I worked for a bit, I left, I came back. It's easy to disconnect from the fact that students move here and this is a little town that they probably never visited before their campus tour, right? And and, and, uh, they have no idea about anything in town. So everything they know about this place is other students telling them like mm-hmm. you should go check this place out mm-hmm. like or, or you need a job oh man you should go to whatever city market's higher like i know i three students work <laughs> at city market or whatever the case might be um you know other cities i think uh when a student comes from a big city they go to school in a big city it's kind of more typical that you look around at, at you, you drive around and you look for the help wanted signs or whatever i find that's not the case with our students here They're, they are not walking around town looking for the help wanted signs mm-hmm. i hear this all the time both in gunnison mm-hmm. and crested butte that there are help wanted signs in every window right uh up and down elk avenue or up and down main street but students have no idea they don't read the shopper they're not looking at at store windows they are talking to other students mm-hmm. and to staff and admin, you know faculty um, and it's all referral and um Wow. And, and I do think that's kind of um, a difference is that, uh, and I'm not saying that this is, the, the Western certainly has a role in helping to develop these relationships, but I think that what, that what I see is that it's the businesses that are making an effort um, to engage with Western and to build relationships. They're the ones that are um, benefiting. And I, and I see this even just in my year and a half after hosting uh, three job fairs and career fairs now, that there is a consistency about the businesses that are coming to campus, right? They choose to come to campus. And, and, I don't, and, and maybe they don't always find an employee every time they come, but they, but they like Western, they like being here and engaging with our students and they show up. And our students know to expect them, they wanna to talk to them. Um, and students come to me and they ask me about these same employers every time it's CBMR, it's 11, right? It's, it's the same sets of employers because they know that these employers are committed Um, to Western and they have kind of that reputation um, on campus as just being here all the time. Um, And so I I would say that 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 is a difference and that's kind of what I think people want when they come move to a small town, right? Is they want to they want to live in a place where everybody knows each other. And if we're not making efforts to get to know each other um, as a university and as a business, um, then the student places a lot of that trust. You know, when a student sees a business on campus, um, for example, that immediately gives them trust. And and honestly, this is maybe another topic for later in the conversation, but if a student sees a Western logo in the front window Mm -hmm. of a business that builds trust with a student who has never lived in Gunnison before, doesn't know what it's like to live in a small town, doesn't know anybody, um, and they don't know where to go, right? They don't know who to who to ask about jobs. And so I think those little efforts um, on the side of the uh, of local businesses go a long way with students. Um, and that's part of what I'm hoping to continue to do with career services is to continue to develop those relationships and simply to provide opportunities for businesses to get here. That's why this summer job fair, for example, is free. I want zero barriers mm. to, to local awesome. businesses to be able to come to, to this campus and recruit, right? I don't want any excuse that, that ah, we couldn't afford it or, or anything like that. Um, and I hope we'll talk more about that later in the conversation about some of those other ways. Um, but that's kind of part of what we're trying to do on our side is to simply make this accessible to employers um, so that they can come meet students because the simple reality, I think, is that a lot of students, uh, they're not going to, especially in their first year in college, which is so critical to shaping their 
ideas about Gunnison, they are not going to venture out and go explore and find you. They're not going to come find your business. You have to come find them in some ways and invite them in. That is so good to know, honestly. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation because, mm -hmm. you know, as a business, you can't just sit there and wait for somebody to show up. You've got to have this outreach. And it's mm -hmm. been a puzzle for us on how to reach students. Um, and so we have a great opportunity. We've made a relationship with the college bookstore, and they let us, in fact, right this very minute, we have a display in their window at the college mm -hmm. bookstore. So we, uh, we have a discount for college students, 10% off. Mm -hmm. So we put that really big and proud. Um, we've got our location, and we've got some of our product that we think college students would be attracted to. Um, and so it, that makes me feel good to know that they're not gonna probably come find me, but if I, put that in there. In fact, Miranda, who um, works at the college bookstore right now mm -hmm. and has that relationship, let us put it in there, said that's how she, she used to work for us and that's how she found us originally is we had a display window in and she said, I'm gonna come check you out. Mm -hmm. And then we got a relationship and she worked for us for a while. So um, that's good to know and I, I would mm -hmm. like to explore more ways that we can get on campus because really that is my biggest puzzle. When yeah. we had our focus group, um, 33 people came, five of which, out of 33 people, five people either read the shopper or the newspaper, and one person listened to the radio yeah. as far as getting their information. Right. I'm like, how do I get to you? Yeah. How do I reach you? Yeah. And they said, social media. And I said, well, so I put stuff on my Facebook page. How do I get you to find it? Mm -hmm. So it's a big puzzle. Mm -hmm. And but you're right. Um, I'll have games and quizzes and things that say like the third person to like our Facebook page this mm -hmm. week gets, and we try to make things viral. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm always looking for that next idea mm -hmm. because this generation really is all about social media. Mm -hmm. It's not the traditional way that business would reach out to college students. So um, and this is a great opportunity right here mm -hmm. for not only the students but for us as businesses. So yeah. we want to make sure and make those connections. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you said what you did. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah. And I think despite all of the concerns, uh, you know, recently over like <clears throat> fake news and people whatever believing whatever the media says, I actually think that college students these days are really savvy about media, and and I think they understand traditional advertising and that and that a lot of traditional advertising is not about them it hasn't you know the, the, it's not nobody cares about them right. um, and I think so I, yeah I think you're right I mean I, that's why social media certainly is influential but that's also why getting back to just the um, the the word of mouth right I mean just the right. old-fashioned hey I worked there I think that would be a cool job or they have great sales you should keep an eye out for them mm -hmm. sometimes um, right. That word gets around, and students will buy into those brands. Um, I think, uh, you know, based on the recommendation of their friends, a hundred percent over an ad. And no, no offense to our local media folks, but but they're just not reading right. the newspaper in the shopper. Right. They don't. I talk to students all the time who are looking for jobs. And I say, we'll pick up a shopper. And students are juniors, and they have no idea what the shopper is. They've oh, wow. never picked one up from the newsstand. Um, I say, this thing's been around since I was in school here. Like, just <laughs> They got jobs listed. You can just go find <laughs> jobs. They have no idea. Right. right. They want this information fed to them. And that's why social right. media, um, I think, is so important. They're not going to gunnelsonshopper.com or whatever to look for jobs. They expect those jobs to come to them um, in many ways, and that's that's just. I don't think that's something we should fight or be angry about. I think that's just right. the reality of it's the, the reality of today. Yeah, don't push through. Um, I think the most shocking thing that you said out of all that is that the students are actually talking. I, I thought they were texting or, I, or Snapchat. I'm too old for Snapchat, but I'm too, too young for Life Alert. Yeah, uh, but but I'm in between there somewhere. Uh, but that's a great thing. And yeah, uh, on the subject of social media, April Fools just passed, and I put a meme up the other day that said, "April 1st, the only day when we actually think for a moment about something on the internet not." possibly being accurate. I was like, <laughs> that is yeah. a great point. The other yeah. 364 days, maybe we should be paying attention. Um, you, you mentioned the focus group, and then I would like right. to transition back into talking about more of the, um, let's say, alternative <coughs> ways of engaging. But you know, you had, tell us about this group of 33. So the 
One Valley Prosperity Project and then the Gunnison Vibrancy, you know, one of the things that they talked about was um, making, seeing Western as a major asset. And, you know, this would be a whole different place without the college. Absolutely. I mean, I don't even know if we'd have a business here if we didn't have the college. And so we're trying to connect more. That was one of the charges. And so we decided to have a focus group because guess what? It's been a couple of years since I've been in college. And so I can't guess what they want or how they do things. So I thought, well, let's just talk to them. So um, Gary helped me a lot um, and several other people at the college. And what they did is they gave me a list of names or they connected it out for me. And I just said, hey, we're putting together a focus group. We'd like to invite you as student leaders and different things. And we'd like to get your opinions and honest opinions. Um, and we're going to give you 20% off coupon on anything you want. And we're going to have free swag bags and different some snacks and different things. And so um, we got together this thing. We gave them a sheet. And Celeste has got one there. We had them fill it out. We asked him to walk around for a little bit, and we had him fill out this sheet. And things like, how do we reach you? You know, how do we market to you? What do you buy? What are your buying habits? And um, not surprisingly, most of them buy online. Why? Because it's convenient. So how can I become their new habit? It's all about habits. You know, mm -hmm. you once you bought socks from me, now next time you buy socks, you're probably going to think of us because that's your habit. And so we wanted to become their habit, we, but first we have to tap into their brain. So I got a lot of surprising um, information from that. And just like you said, they don't read the newspaper. Um, so it's social media. Um, the, the best way they said to market to them, I said, how can I get your attention? They said flyers on campus. That was the most, um, the most one that they responded to. The, I also asked them, what's important when you shop um, the 26 people out of the 33 said price is their most important thing. Mm -hmm. sure. So they're shopping for bargains. So um, then I said, so our stuff isn't cheap. Our stuff is good. It's quality. Mm -hmm. So I said, how can I? They said, give us a discount. Give us a student discount. So um, that's what we do, and we advertise it. You know, and whenever somebody comes in, I'll say, oh, are you a student? We welcome them in. We try to really... Um, let them know what we're about. We tell them about our discount, but we always have a huge sell section in the back, which is 20 to 50% off. So, man, they make a beeline back there, and they're always looking for bargains. So price is real important. I couldn't have guessed the answers to these questions. I really needed to ask them. Um, not so surprising, what I found from this focus group, is they're really into sustainability, especially the, the students that live here. here. They're really into climate change and the earth and repurposing and recycling and so I said so but you're shopping online I mean that's a lot of shipping back and forth and you know they didn't think about that and then I also um, once I got all their information I said can I do a little presentation for you can I let you know the importance of shopping locally <laughs> and we consider you local now you're going to college here you're one of us welcome um, here's the things for shopping locally. You kept your money here in this economy. Now, you come in and you ask me for a prize, you're having an event or whatever, I'll give you a prize for your event. Um, I'll let you use our window. We uh, let people use our window to do displays and things. Um, in fact, the college is gonna do one next month. Um, it will give you prizes. Now, is Amazon gonna give you a prize? I mean, so you keep your money local, so that's one thing. Um, you created local jobs. You helped out the environment. You benefited from our passion and our expertise. We'll actually fit you, all those things. You kept your tax dollars here, which is going to help the roads, the fire, the police, all the stuff. So I went through the, the ten top ten reasons it's important to shop local, and they were blown away. Really? They were like, I never thought about any of those things. I just think it's three in the morning, my feet are cold, I need socks, I'm going to go online. <laughs> And so I said, think about it. And I, I told him about that. Um, have you guys seen that cartoon Wally? This guy that's just, you know, a blob laying in a chair. Just I said, is that what you want to be? Get out and socialize. Walk up and down Main Street. Meet your neighbors. Meet your friends. Get out and do stuff. We'll do our part. We'll have events. 
We'll give you discounts. We'll do things to make you want to come down, but don't just sit on your computer and order everything online. Be part of our community. Yep. But I have to do my part and make it something that they want to do. Well, and I think that you spoke to it earlier, Craig, of like some of these gestures by the community. Gestures may be the wrong word, but logo placement, flag, those sort of things in the window mm -hmm. is the first thing of breaking that barrier. Mm -hmm. I think what you did was way deeper than that. And, you know, if I were to think about other opportunities, I speak on campus a good bit. Um, sometimes they invite me, sometimes I just show up. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, speaking on campus is one way to do that. I think a, a focus group like yours is like next level. You know, that's like saying, hey, like here, I'm here, share my knowledge with you. And you did. But then you also did something and said, but I need to hear from you. And that's really validating their value to the community. Oh, my gosh. So many of them that came to that, I saw repetitively Good. after that as a new shopper. Good. And um, because we really honored them, we also gave them swag and prizes, and we were having fun. In fact, we're having another event, and it's not a focus event. We're going to have a... Um, educational night where we're going to talk about some of our products, do fitting, um, have extra discounts, um, different things. Some of my reps are going to be there, and that's going to be April 25th. Cool. And we're closing at 6 to 8, only college students, only making college it really students. special just for them. So, And I'll tell you, the um, some of the people on campus have been amazing at helping me get the word out to the students because mm -hmm. that's the hardest thing. I can have an event, but if you don't get the word out, who's going to be there? So, but I'll tell you, if any other businesses are interested in learning how to do a focus group or how I did it, um, they can take the focus group sheet that I have and make it their own, ask their own questions. I'd be mm -hmm. happy to help anybody mm -hmm. um, with that because it was very successful for us. That's great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. That's really fascinating. And I, I want to kind of dive into the other levels, of, other ways of engaging too. And, and you probably have some other ideas to share on that as well. Um, you know, we talk about so there's a connection to campus, and, and we can talk about physical conduits to campus, and that's a, been a big part of the Gunnison Vibrancy Initiative. Uh, Kelly and I are both involved in that, uh, as well as people in the crowd. And you know, talking about um, activating downtown, and things are happening down here, and reasons to be down here, reasons for cars that are driving by to stop, right? Uh, reasons for people to get out of their homes, reasons for people to put down their computers, turn off their TVs. Uh, one of the physical ways of doing this is this exploration on Ohio Street of changing that streetscape uh, to be more friendly, to create and be responsive to the feedback from the campus, from students on campus, that we needed a safe conduit. You know, that people need to feel safe, they need to be right. on a sidewalk, they could be able to ride their bikes and get themselves mm -hmm. down the few blocks they need to to get to the downtown area here. Um, it's a great way to be thinking about how we need to connect people, you know, physically and of course in communities that are measurably happier. Um, there's studies on this, walkable and bikeable. Like mm -hmm. typically those communities by themselves, there's a walkability index and a bikeability index that you can get for your community. Uh, correlation between those places and how happy people are. And I would say that those are uh, in very neurochemically simple ways of just connecting you to place as well. You know, getting out and feeling good and moving naturally and doing those things. Mm -hmm. And I would say segue that into retention, you know, that, that they can get off of campus, they don't feel siloed here. You know, Signal Peak is right behind us here. They can get out and do those things. But how can we get them down there in an easy way so that they feel like, hey, like that's right out my back door and it's, seep, it's easy and safe and, and it's fun down there. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned earlier Power Stop, and I think Power Stop has mm -hmm. very strong local following from campus. They do a flip night. We won't talk yeah. about that specifically. <laughs> um, it involves things. Maybe we should. It gets a lot of students. Does <laughs> <laughs> it help us bring them to campus? Um, but they, they do a good job of engaging students. And, you know, yeah. I lived here uh, when I first moved here, 05, 06. Uh, the Gunnison Brewery was the only brewery in town. And they had taco night. You know, they had fish taco night. Yeah. And they were a buck fifty or a buck twenty five, And you could buy a PBR for $2. Uh, or you could try to sneakers in a, in a backpack, which is not supporting <laughs> local business. Um, but that was a great way of bringing students in and getting them connected to the brewery. Yeah. And that place was vibrant and full of people that night for sure and then of course when they had a few extra bucks to spend there's craft beer to go buy you know your parents come to town those sort of things maybe when you know you're on their credit card yeah um but i thought that was a great example of bringing students in and i think because of the popularity even a dollar taco was profitable for them yep. but it right. created a relationship with them yeah right. uh, and you've done that with your focus group right. of creating a relationship with them you know they now feel like hey this is kelly a person and i got a bag of swag but I know Treads and Threads, like they're my people right. now. So um, so let's talk about other parts. You mentioned mm -hmm. logos. Uh, we talked mm -hmm. about flyers on campus being really important. Mm -hmm. uh, discounts for students. Uh, it's right. sort of a no-brainer to make that 
uh, available to students. How do they find out about that? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it, we talked a little bit uh, briefly about you know speaking in class and getting that sort of connection back to campus too. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else is missing? What are some other things that could be done by the community to, to better support? Yeah, so I, I would throw it um, uh, backing up perhaps a, a little bit, but a note about sure. um, I was in a presentation um, with the, uh, many folks from our student affairs division talking about a focus group they had just done. And um, they talked, uh, I think, interestingly about a, a student who transferred here from Adams State. And, uh, and you know, his sort of reaction to what is it like living in Gunnison? And his reaction, I mean, this is coming from Alamosa, who, being from Gunnison, I don't know if this is like a, a well-kept secret, but we like to think that Gunnison is so much better than Alamosa. But his whole thing was, was yeah, but Alamosa is a college town. Like, Alamosa huh. loves Adams. Every place has the Adams stickers. But also he talked about how restaurants had the, the, the Grizzly Burger. Right, because that's oh, wow. their their, <clears throat> their mascot, and and every you know all these places had student discounts, and students students knew who had student discounts, and so they would go to those places, and 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 there was a bar in town that had college night every week, and eighteen it was eighteen and up every week, so college students could get engaged out and get out into town, and I thought that was really interesting because wow. I yeah. know that this is a conversation that's been happening at least since I was in school here twenty plus years ago. Um, about about what it, what are businesses doing to sort of look like they support Western, and there there are some. I mean, uh, you know, on campus, everybody know. I mean, Danny at the dive and Mario's right, right is so involved in everything, and everybody right. knows him. But but so many businesses, um, if you walked into them, you would have no sense that they cared that there was a university in town. And I'm not saying that as a business owner, you should have an obligation to do that. That's you do whatever you want as a business owner. But if you're trying to sort of develop that partnership and a relationship and you're trying to attract students into a place that they can trust and they can be comfortable in, um, I think those are the kind of things that, that we could still continue to work on as a, as a, as a town um, Absolutely. in Gunnison. Um, and so, uh, and then I'll go, I mean, I, I just had a conversation today about homecoming and about, about that. It's one thing for us to expect that businesses are going to jump on board for homecoming and like put up signs and their businesses and everything. It's another thing, though, and let's just be really honest. I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. But we also can't expect too much when we as a university are showing up five days before the event, before homecoming starts, and asking you to put up, like to clear a window in the front of your shop for us to put up a big banner, right? That doesn't work for business owners either. And so I think that there's um, certainly... uh, there's kind of two sides of, of that whole um, conversation. Um, we also have lots of other opportunities uh, to, in terms of just getting engaged. I mean, uh, before school starts or at or right as school starting, um, hosting community fairs, right? And, and just allow literally anybody from the community that wants a table to talk about what they're doing to get in. And we see, I don't keep a head count. I didn't keep a head count last year, but I mean, hundreds of students will come through that event in uh, end of August or early September and um, learn about local businesses. Uh, in my department in particular in career services, and this is one thing, it's kind of, it's, it's hard in some ways to sort of, to, to perhaps market um, this, although I think now sitting as an ex officio member of the Chamber of Commerce, I think it's, it has helped quite a bit. But um, we also have opportunities year round that employers don't have to wait until a career fair to come to campus. Um, they can call me, and I work with employers all the time with recruiters, military recruiters, and um, th- various businesses all the time. Um, if you work with career services, we'll get you space on campus to come and, and table uh, and meet all kinds of students. And we had a, um, a company just just recently who came in and never been to campus before. They're from Utah, and they bought some uh, pizza, uh, which, by the way, buying outside pizza in the university center is against our rules, so that's not actually allowed. <laughs> we had to talk to them about that. But, uh, but they bought pizza, and they had over 30 students show up to, to, just for a social to talk about opportunities for working with their company. Um, they smelled the pizza. Yeah, well, yeah. So, well, and they tabled during the day and told them there would be free pizza. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but if they if people work through career services, we can get all those things. You don't have to rent space on campus to do those things. 
Um, getting into classrooms. Uh, now, this isn't necessarily appropriate for every business. I mean, if you're if you're just looking kind of for somebody to work a cash register, we're probably not going to get you into a classroom. Um, but a lot of businesses or just business owners with particular experience, we have professors all over the place that are, that would love for you to come in and talk about your experience um, in, to their classes. And that's obviously good for students, uh, but it's also, let's be honest, it's also good advertising. It's good PR for your for your business here in town. How do um, we how do we let the professors know that we're interested in that? I know mm -hmm. my husband's done that a couple of times, yeah. but how do we as individuals let the professors know? Yeah, so great question. Um, one is catch the professor when they're out at the brewery some night and just talk to him. Um, <laughs> We but, never see professors at local bars or restaurants. <laughs> yeah, sure, it happens. Uh, believe it or not, uh, they go to accidentally. They're, the restaurants they're trying to go to the library. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but also, I am. I would love to help uh, be that connection. Okay. Um, and 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 I will tell you know businesses like you know let's talk about what it is you're interested in talking about. And if it's just really not going to be appropriate for an actual classroom setting, I'll let you know that. I'm going to be okay. honest with you that up front. But, but if you have some great information to share um, and it's relevant to some of our uh, courses, and this could be in anything, I mean, this could be certainly in our business school, but I mean, right. um, you know, sociology, psychology, we have so many businesses that are relevant to students in some way, um, then I'd be happy to help make connections with faculty. Ultimately, of course, just as a disclaimer, faculty have to faculty get to make the decision about right. how their class sure. time is used. Right. And it's no guarantee that I'm going to be successful in helping to make that connection. Um, but if nothing else, you build some relationships and you get to know each other and we make some introductions uh, and we find other ways to do things. I would also throw out just on that sort of note that um, we have a career week every uh, uh, October, the week before homecoming. Um, in October, and um, last year was my first year back at Western, so it was a little bit reserved. We had a couple of local employers on campus. Um, this year, we're going to really try to blow it out and go much bigger, but I am I am looking for opportunities to get local employers on campus through, we'll have a couple of a career and job fair, we'll, um, I mean, everything from mock interviews to, to sitting down with students to review resumes. Um, we have lots of opportunities to put your expertise to work. Uh, that's awesome. Whatever that expertise is. Um, and I know that that's hard. I say this now so matter-of-factly. I realize that that's hard to, to market and to communicate. I don't have emails for every business owner mm -hmm. in Denison. And so a lot of this also is word of mouth, right? Trying to build right. a relationship at a time. Um, and, I, and I do have, in the last year, I have the businesses that they, they want to come, right? I mean, I, I think of Wells Fargo. I think of Crested Butte. Um, the, com businesses that I know, companies that I know are going to be here. If I ask them to be here and to do something on campus, they're going to be here. And I would love to expand that network and to grow that so that we can diversify that for students. And I hope that, that, that businesses would see that um, not as just one more thing on the to-do list, but as an opportunity to get in here and really engage with students. And, you know, I'd like to say, too, that we're not the Wells Fargo or the CBMR, but some of the mom and pop shops that only have one or two students at a time, mm -hmm. we'd still like some kind of opportunity or figuring out how to connect mm -hmm. more on campus. Yep. So keep us apprised to that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And, and you can get a list of most of the businesses in Gunnison County if you can get into the chamber database. <laughs> and, and, I hear I might have a connection there. Export it. <laughs> Uh, you know, but those are, uh, you know, so I, I really like the, I think there's some things we do that are, um, uh, I don't know what to call them, I want to say figurehead is the word, but that's such a, the wrong term for it, but the, the common, like, sort of here's how we connect to campus, uh, the Chamber of Commerce makes so much sense that Western is uh, present on that. Mm -hmm. We've both served on the Chamber of Commerce board. Uh, still on the board? I'm on the tourism board now. Tourism board now. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's great. And, um, you know, the town or the city for a while had a position, and Russ is still is here with us. Does the city still have a position for students on the city council? Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's an extraordinary learning opportunity for a student to be involved in those. Right. Um, and I really like what you're saying that I think the hard part of this is, like, when you were saying all the things you were saying, I was like, whose job is that in this community? Mm -hmm. And it's... A lot of that is nobody's job, you know. Right. And it's the it's the stuff that falls in between of, like you have a certain obligation or a certain drive to create personalized, meaningful opportunities for students mm -hmm. and personalized, meaningful opportunities for businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's like 
that's the hard like how do you get that to jive together mm-hmm. but I think that's that's where it's really at you know that um, it's great that that CB Mar is really involved um, and that they had come down here in Wells Fargo they're looking for large amounts of entry level employees right yeah how do we take that next level for the student experience yep. um, so that it carries more than just that yeah either way working in CB Mar great thing like and if that's the thing and let's move into this subject but if that's the thing that connects them to this community and they're like the positive label of like, hey, like I'm the kid from the front range that skied a bunch, but now I live I, I live in this mountain town and I work at Crest Butte Mountain Resort, extreme skiing, everybody knows this place around the world for the epic skiing that it has, uh, and I'm a lifty up there. Like that's a cool label for a kid to have some real pride around um, mm-hmm. and, and other levels within that business, but that maybe keeps them here. So. Mm-hmm. What have we not talked about on the retention side that uh, that the community can be doing um, and that the students can facilitate for themselves, certainly? Get up out of your chair, leave your dorm room, leave your house. Um, <laughs> but w- what else might be missing? Yeah, uh, that's a great the, – the, the, and we talked about this a bit earlier, but, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing and, – and, and I come back to it because I was surprised by it. But the biggest thing is just this sense that it's not finances. That's not the reason students are leaving for the most part. Um, there are some things we can't help. Maybe they get here and they realize they want to study something, and we just don't have that program. Like that, we can't do a whole lot about that. Engineering um, coming soon. Engineering coming soon. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, but um, but the biggest thing that really that just caught me was the sense of just feeling a sense of fit here. And I guess I would I would throw out, and this is something that again, was interesting for me to think about when a colleague brought this up. I think it's worth business owners thinking about too. That as a university, part of our job is not to compete with the town necessarily, but we want to create a campus where where a student can fulfill most of their needs on campus, right? This is why we have dining halls and laundry facilities and and pool tables and at you university don't sell shoes, do you? We don't sell shoes. Okay. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. <laughs> we don't sell shoes. I was okay, going to move this pen away from you. <laughs> potential. Um, but that creates an interesting problem for business owners sure. right. in the town because as Western grows, and as a student who was here when we had our old university center, right? I'm looking down there at our beautiful new huge university center. It used to be a little cabin. and. And that is just, that's a sign of where universities are going, which is that we have to provide event space and socializing space and high definition televisions and coffee shops. And these are all things that that students just expect from their campus nowadays. And that creates new challenges for business owners in terms of getting students off campus. A student can buy a coffee here on their student ID, right? And not have to ever exchange cash. So, So what is a business owner doing who runs a coffee shop at least? To, to convince that student to leave campus instead and to spend cash there when they might have parents adding money to their ID card that they can spend right on campus right. all the time. Um, and I don't have a great answer for that necessarily, um, except to come back to this idea of helping students find a sense of fit. And that comes down to making this place comfortable. And I guess I would go to a personal story of my own freshman year. Now, I ended up falling in love with Gunnison staying, but but I came here my freshman year. I lived over there in Dolores Hall and never intended to stay. I was here for a year. I was going to transfer to CU Boulder. That was my whole goal in life. Um, I never, I'm not sure that I left campus my freshman year other than to drive home to see my family. Hmm. So uh, was it the sophomore ditch for you then? The first, <laughs> the first time you experienced that? Yeah, I never, I, it might have been the graduate ditch actually. <laughs> uh, it, was, it took a long time, but um, I didn't know anything about town my freshman hmm. year. And it was only because I got a job, I became an RA in the residence hall here that, that I stayed in Gunnison at all. And um, so I think that that's just sort of maybe a, 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 a cautionary tale about the fact that students can, they can get all their basic needs here. So what's the value added to them to get out into, into, the, into the town? And if they're like me and they're coming from Denver or they're coming from Chicago or from LA or from New York, what, what makes them come to your little corner on Main Street and whatever, Ohio, and find your business to come explore the things that you are offering? I mean, what, you know, how is a student really supposed to know um, about that. And again, I don't have the answer. I'm not a marketing um, 
professional. All I know is that there is value to the university in helping to make that happen somehow. Can I take a stab at that? Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> So Everybody write this down. This is, <laughs> she's got it. I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, so I think if the collaboration between the college and the downtown has been great, and you guys have been more than um, willing to work with anybody that's wanting to, but I think it's up to us to have an event, get out of your chair, come down I've got to have something when I did my focus group and I said what do you want and they said pizza and beer and I said well number one I'm not going to ser serve <laughs> beer for obvious reasons I'm not going to serve pizza because I don't want pizza grease all over my stuff I said what else do you want and they said we want discounts we want something fun we want something engaging and so I instead of trying to guess I've been bringing in college students to say okay let's help me create an event so um, that's what we're doing. We're creating different events, different fun things, where they can come out and be social. And so I have to take it on myself to give them a reason to come out. So I was talking to Celeste, and she said, well, why don't, in September, college students are here, they've settled in, why don't we have a business after hours? It's kind of like the art walk, where we reach out to a lot of businesses. Who wants to be involved? We have extra discounts. We have whatever it is, scavenger hunt, whatever it is come out and here's the businesses that are playing and you walk around and you get to know as a freshman you get to know the businesses downtown you got extra discounts then it's up to me once you're there at my place it's up to me to have be engaging to be welcoming to you know but you got them in the door so that's that's one thing that we're looking at is having that um that chamber business after hours um hopefully in september the other thing is, when, when people come in, I try to collect their data. How's the best way to reach you? You know, like... Cheek swab like data? Or? Well, yeah, yeah, okay. that's... <laughs> um, we only did that for you. <laughs> no, but we try to collect, um, you know, what year are you in? Uh, do you prefer to get a text or an email or whatever? How can we reach you? when we're having an event, mm -hmm. when we're having an extra discount. And then we try to make it special, not like the community and students. We try to say, no, it's closed off to the community, it's just for students. We try to make it special for them, mm -hmm. make them feel like it's just for them. So collecting their data. And the other thing we do, um, I can't speak about a coffee shop, but if you're going to be, um, students come in and we live in a cold environment and maybe they came from LA and maybe they're cold and they need coat and they need gloves and they need blah 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 and they don't they're tired of mailing it back and forth on Amazon so they come in and I'll I'll tell them what they need and they can try it on and they can have hands on so but they're like well I don't have the money you know my parents do that I'm like hey parents can call me over the phone order a gift certificate, we'll ring it up right there, we have a gift certificate, the student comes in, they've got money in our store, they never have to see that money. The parent doesn't send them the money and hope they don't spend it on beer and then they're still cold. <laughs> you know, yeah. they can come in and, um, and we've had several students' parents do that, just say, here's an account for the year, here's $500, student can come in throughout the year and get what they need as they need it. And we'll keep account of that. I'd like to get the word out on that mm -hmm. on campus and I'd like to encourage other businesses to do the same thing sure. just like you can put money on the cash card here at the campus <clears throat> why not local businesses yeah. and so. I should note that this is something Kelly and I and, and Celeste spoke about recently but um, we the university has a, a parent newsletter right and they are open and I'll, I'll need to I'll share details through the through the uh, chamber but right um, they are open to businesses including information um, in those newsletters. Let's do it. Um, yeah, I mean, in the best case, and, and I can't speak to parents, but I, I mean, I just know from my own experience, from tracking my own email communications, that, that a great email blast to students gets about 30% open rate, 28% okay. open rate. Right. Um, but I suspect if parents are anything like my own dad was when I went to college, they are probably reading every email that comes from the university right. because they want to know what's going on. And um, and I hope that uh, that'll be, yeah, just a nice way for, for businesses to connect um, to our students maybe through 
parents. <laughs> um, right. And, yeah. And, and, and I would appreciate that. And I'll tell you what, I'll be an advocate on the business side. If you can connect me on how to get in that newsletter, I'll let my other friends up and down Main Street know about it. Mm -hmm. And because I feel like the more that you have, mm -hmm. and then they feel welcomed because they're like, look at all these businesses that have a discount. Yeah. Our, our college discount is only 10%. It's not like we're giving, giving it away, yeah. but we also have that big sales section. We also do layaway, yeah. all kinds of stuff. We, we try to make it easy to do business with us. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna encourage other businesses to do a similar thing. Like you said, the Grizzly Burger or whatever. Mm -hmm. What can we do Mountaineer style? Yeah. We you can't know. do the grizzly burger because it would be a, <laughs> would be a man burger, and that's like that's like city's thing. Okay, a scratch that idea. But yeah, it's, we'll have to come up with something slightly different. Uh, how about questions from you all out there? Anything that's been burning uh, you want to hear? Want to talk to this this group about? No, I don't see anything. I got one coming. Hi everyone. I'm from up from Crested Butte. Came down from Crested Butte, so I've got some questions more related to Crested Butte. Uh, Craig, I'm curious. One, uh, how many students do you think are actually making the trek all the way? I'm doing air quotes here to Crested Butte to work up there. Ooh, I, I don't have numbers, um, but an obscene amount. Um, of, of our students. In fact, I'm surprised at the number of students, and again, I don't have good data, so I can't give you a percentage or a number, but just based on, I meet with about face-to-face, -face, one -on one-on-one with maybe about 200 students a year in various capacities, um, and do a bunch of classroom things, and um, I'm always surprised, given especially things just like the cost of living, just how much finances are a factor for students. I'm always surprised how many of them live in Crested Butte um, and how many of them work in Crested Butte. Obviously, the resort is a big one, but mm -hmm. waiting tables, bartending, um, these types of things. Uh, and so many of them, of course, live in Gunnison and take the bus um, up. I mean, right by my house is one of the bus stops, and I see some students all the time waiting on the bus to get up to a shift. Um, without skis to wait tables without skis yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and so yeah don't have good numbers but a lot of them and i also know that that uh, so many students in fact this actually again this is one of those things i'm not sure if i should be tipping our hat here or not but um one of the things that also surprises me is the number of our graduates students who graduate in may and their only intention in life is to move to Crested Butte and to just find something. They're just gonna, they're mm. just gonna pay the bills for a year or whatever. Um, and I and I work with these students quite a bit, actually. Students who graduated six months ago or a year ago, and who have been waiting tables, and they're they're, they're not sure. They they feel like they should be starting a career, but this is the greatest life in the world. They get to ski in the winters and you know hang out in the summers and. Um, so, so it is a lot of it is a lot of it's actually kind of a challenge for Western because when we report our our this is maybe getting a little bit into the weeds but when we report our outcomes data um, which we've started doing really seriously in the last year um, nationally uh, you know sometimes a lot of our data it doesn't necessarily look great because we have a lot of graduates mm -hmm. who are doing part time work but those graduates also will tell us. <laughs> But this is what I want to be doing, dude. I'm 23, man. I'm I'm living the dream. Like I'm right. I'm skiing for the next year. This is where I want to be. Um, and so they're sticking around here at least for a couple of years. Um, and so again, I don't. I, I wish I had better numbers. I could probably figure out if I really dug into it more. But but you would say that it's beneficial for Crested Butte businesses to come down, get a table on campus, put flyers on campus come to the career fairs <clears throat> yeah um so i was yeah so specifically on the flyers thing i would say that was interesting to hear kelly say that students said they want to look for flyers because i tell employers not to give me flyers because i don't have time to put flyers up all over campus all the time uh, but that might be something i need to figure out because if that's what students are looking at then that's worth us doing um yes i think it is worth it for crest debut to be recruiting here because look, I mean, again, I don't have a percentage, but how many of how many students we're not drawing students from Buffalo, New York, to come to Western 
because they found the Harvard of the West, if I'm being honest, right? They're, they're coming here because of Crested Butte. They want to be in Crested Butte. Um, and so, yeah, but I think Crested Butte's a huge draw. And the more opportunities that students feel like they have up there, I think, I believe students would take advantage of them. Hey, I, I have a question on yeah. that. Do you have a community bulletin board on campus that people could post that students might go to? You know, like a, I'm talking about an online board, not a physical board. Oh, great question. I was going to say, there's a physical board no, right no, over here. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but students, not a whole lot of students come up here. Um, yeah, thank you for asking that, Kelly. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so our, our, our big platform now, Western just moved a year ago to, not even a year ago, to a platform called Handshake. Um, this is free for employers to use. Uh, and um, it is a little bit of technology, so this is the one struggle. It is one more password, it's one more login you have to keep track of. Okay. Um, but if you're like me and you use Chrome, Chrome just keeps track of all the stuff for you, so okay. you don't actually have to keep track. But um, you can post as many jobs as you want for free. I send um, emails to, two separate emails. I send one email to students every single week, highlighting new internships and new jobs. Um, that have been posted to Handshake. I send a separate email every week to faculty and staff on campus um, highlighting events and internships and jobs that are coming up um, to, to try to get faculty and staff advocating to students on our behalf. Um, so that's, yeah, so, so Handshake. Is it mainly for jobs then, or can you, like if I were having an event, if I were having the student event, yeah. I could put it on that. Oh, it's almost like you planned these questions. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Handshake actually, uh, as an employer, you can it, once you connect with Western again, which is totally free, you can actually you can actually propose programs. You can propose times for on-campus interviews if you want to do that, um, and that will send notifications straight to me um, okay. and to Louise, who do it Downey, who works in our business school, and uh, we'll review them and then we'll be in touch. And yeah, I mean, I, I can't think of many reasons that we would deny any of those proposals. Um, even if you just call me offline and we just talk about an event, I'm just going to do that in Handshake. I'm just going to go build the event in Handshake because that's what helps us notify students that that event is so happening. So I think my April 25th college student private event, mm -hmm. I, I could post it on that. Absolutely, yep. Excellent. Uh, and, then we, and then what I would do with that is I would, the next week when I do my big uh, email update to students, is I would include that there so students can... Uh, they can RSVP and handshake, but um, it would include your contact information and they could be in touch. Yep. That's super Absolutely. helpful. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I would love to see that get to the Chamber of Commerce and yeah. Chambers of Commerce and get that back out to the community as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, we've run our about an hour of time. Um, I did want to say that one of the big insights. Did you have another question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Meekishly. Please. <laughs> I was hoping, Craig, you might be able to talk a little bit about the difference between hiring a part-time or seasonal employee versus an intern and why a business might pick one over the other. Okay, great. Yeah, I will try to keep this to the fairly short yeah, briefly. Um, I do have, by the way, for everybody watching, a, a nice PDF manual that outlines kind of internship responsibilities. Um, yeah, so, so the, the big difference, I think, probably the easiest way to recognize the difference is really kind of ethically or philosophically the difference between the two. When you hire a part-time employee, you are paying somebody to give their time to you as an employer, and they do within the law what you ask them to do. If you want them to clean a toilet, they clean a toilet. If you want them to stand at the front door and greet people, that's what they do. They stand at the front door. Um, and a part-time job, that comes with certain then uh, federal both requirements, but then also kind of just guidelines. I mean, they have to be paid a certain amount, right? like a minimum wage. Right. Um, if they work so many hours a week, they need to receive certain benefits. Um, those things all come, uh, they are considered an employee of your business. They have to be covered by workers' comp insurance, all these kind of things. Um, an internship is different in that the key focus really should not be, um, although, they, although they are working for your company, the key focus for them is not just that they are performing work for you. In fact, actually, one of the federal guidelines around internships is that by its very nature, 
an internship should not simply replace the work that a paid employee otherwise would be doing. That's, that's one of the basic, that, that's especially, an, an employer actually can be held accountable for that um, if it's an unpaid internship in particular. So a paid internship, I should preface all of this by saying, a paid internship really can be treated just like a part-time job. That's one of the values of a paid internship for an employer, is that they, the employer has a lot more flexibility in terms of what that intern does during their time. An unpaid internship um, is protected in many ways. There's a whole list, this is in my, my internship info packet that I, that I can provide to employers anytime. But one of them, yes, is that an unpaid, in, uh, unpaid intern in particular cannot replace the work that a paid, in, that a paid employee otherwise would be doing. The, the primary benefit of the job needs to be toward the academic advancement or the professional advancement of the intern as opposed to the business purposes of the employer. Um, and there, there are several uh, other guidelines. So the high level difference is really um, quite philosophical, but at Western, whether it's a paid or unpaid internship, um, if a student is doing it for credit, we expect that that, that intern has worked up front to produce a set of learning outcomes for themselves that relate to their academic work. Their academic advisor needs to sign off on that um, before they get into that internship. Uh, that in an internship, there's going to be regular uh, supervisory meetings, kind of mentoring meetings with the employer uh, or with a, an internship site supervisor and with the student to talk about their performance and how they can improve and to talk kind of big picture about the work that they're doing and um, all of that. These are all things that we would not expect of just a part-time job. Um, and I should also say, back up all of this and say that I hope that a part-time job is a learning experience too. I think that employers themselves benefit um, from creating an environment where their employees are learning something, right? Where they're where they're where they're growing as a person, as a professional, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. But legally speaking, that's not at all required from a part-time job um, at all. So Different hire people as a part-timer and just be a good person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nutshell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, and the paid versus unpaid thing is a big question because th there are legal differences. Uh, and I like the protections that come with an unpaid internship. But the fact of the matter is that students that, that if a business is if a business is benefiting from from an intern, well, I mean, that intern should probably be compensated for their for their time in some sure. way. I mean, that's right. just the bottom line. But that puts some impetus on the employer to, to be thoughtful about what that intern is doing. I mean, don't just hire an intern, because I actually see this a fair amount at Western. You hire an intern who's getting credit at Western so they can graduate, but that internship is the same thing as any old part-time job that they could have done anywhere else. There's nothing extra to it. Yep. If you're an employer, go ahead and hire that intern, but make it, build some value into it. I mean, um, and, and make sure that it's really advancing your business instead of just you could just go out and hire a part-time employee and not have to worry about any of the paperwork, not have to worry about phone calls with the academic advisor. <laughs> right. Right. I'm sure there's a clever way to say that you're a cashier, but with all these numbers, you're going to be doing calculus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see it. It's, yeah. it's a stretch. Yeah. Uh, additional questions? Done? Good? Yeah, sure. Comment from the crowd? Greg, with that, or Craig, with that, um, the internship thing, um, one of our biggest goals of our business is to find interns like that yeah. as well. But the biggest thing that ever comes back, the most flattering thing for us is when people leave and they get advanced to management right away in their next yeah. career. We know we've done something to better them when they yeah. leave, and we'd love to keep every one of our employees we've ever had, but we know Gunnison may not be their lifetime place, you know? And so... Yeah. We're looking always for interns that, that are in the accounting. They're doing accounting, book accounting, and they come into my store, and I didn't do accounting. I learned it on the fly. And so I do things way different than any accountant would ever do. And they go, I've never been taught these little ways to play the shell game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's all legal, but, you know, it's like, and so they learn so many other ways, and people go on to own their own businesses after us. And we're more than happy to let us, Absolutely. let them learn under our nickel instead yeah. of and having to not have the mistakes we had yeah. if we can help them so yeah. that when they launch their business they don't go 
oh my gosh, I'm going to go out of business in, in three months because yeah. I had no idea what I was doing, you mm -hmm. know? And so that's the most flattering thing that any business could do for an intern or even a part-time employee, you yeah. know? Um, so we would be definitely interested in getting in touch with all the finance and business people. And we used to go to the SBI all the time, the Small Business Institute. And Kathy Elliott used to always have me come up and talk to the students that were thinking about launching their own businesses. And so I could, they could quiz me on what's it really like in the real world to own a business and yeah. what are the hoops you go through that you can't learn in a book, you know? Yeah. And so it's just, uh, we love to give back to the students. That's our biggest connection. I, I used to work in Res Life here as well. Yeah. That's how I came to Gunnison. Yeah, yeah. Treads and Threads would not exist in Gunnison <laughs> if Western didn't exist in Gunnison because yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have been here. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that that's a huge resource that we have in this community that a lot of communities mm -hmm. don't have. Yeah. You know, it's a huge advantage that that the college is so important to our, our valley, not just from the economic stimulus that it creates, but the ability for those students to also have that ability to learn things beyond campus. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think to your point, that one of last comment that that um, I find that when I see like part time job postings, employers are really clear about what it is they're looking for. We need somebody that's going to work a cashier, or whatever. When employers contact me about, hey, I have questions about an intern. We'd like to hire an intern, and I ask them, well, what are you looking for? I have no idea. Well, what do you need an intern for? Well, that don't know what. <laughs> and so when you talk about like, you, you, you like that connection with accounting students, right? This is the thing that I would love to help employers figure out is, is the intern, your internship, it needs to relate to something that students are studying here on campus. And you can't be an intern in cashiering. That's not a thing. You can be an intern in like economics, and accounting, outdoor and ed. business administration. We would also take outdoor ed. Outdoor people. education, yeah. Exercise and sports science, right? You can be an intern in those things. You, you know, you can't be an intern in like mopping the floors, right? That's not what an internship <laughs> is. But I would love to talk to employers about. And frankly, I've talked to employers, and half of them, uh, I might have just died here, and uh, half of them, we uh, talk them out of. Half of them, we talk talk them out of. Uh, of the internship altogether, because um, they because they just realize after discussion that that oh w w we don't need an intern we just need to hire a part time employee yeah fifteen intern hours. just sounded better yeah yeah <laughs> well that's interesting thanks um, I'm really glad that we uh, connected the dots this was Celeste's uh, brainchild is saying hey let's get campus and uh, community together thank sitting you, on the Celeste. same couch I think uh, it was, Kelly's was it Kelly's idea oh. Thank you. Was it your idea? I don't know. It was. It was. It was our collective idea. And this is our version of between two ferns. We're between two rhododendrons. <laughs> uh, I think they're rhododendrons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that Zach Galifianakis is going to come after us for that. <laughs> but I think that was a really great thing to bring together. So thank you for that. Uh, some events that are coming up for folks out there listening in. Uh, April 18th hosted. Uh, uh, we'll have a business after hours at Circus Train. That's on uh, the first block North Main Street. They're going to have a candy bar. So normally at our business Ooh. after hours beer and pizza also applies to adults they like free beer and pizza uh, this one is going to be a candy bar where they have all candy instead of alcoholic refreshments and then our next storytellers is going to be may 23rd at the blackstock bistro featuring terry morrow who's the owner of high uh, mountain liquors but has done a ton of other entrepreneurial stuff so we're really curious to hear about her experiences doing that in the valley um, in multiple opportunities here in the valley and even out of the valley uh, the chamber is looking for a bunch of volunteers, both chambers, because Ride the Rockies is coming back to the Valley uh, in the yes. middle part of June, 8th through the June. early June. So if you're looking uh, for our volunteer opportunities to get involved in that, please talk to either of the chambers because they're doing both Gunnison and Crested Butte. Crested Butte twice? Both twice. Both twice. I'm really sorry. <laughs> 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 and it's a it's a lot of work for our Chamber of Commerce because it's a, it's a big volunteer draw for us. So, yes, it's great for our businesses. Uh, business After Hours up in the north end of the valley, April 23rd at Mountain Colors at Paint and Design, co-hosted by Cooler Painting and Doors. Uh, Matt Cooler used to be the president down here of the Chamber of Commerce. King Systems is, uh, and Inspired Home CB all together. Um, and except they're going to have a, 
a beer bar instead of a candy bar uh, like the ones <laughs> down here. And then CB Pole Pedal Paddle, if you haven't seen this event, it's a really fun off-season event. Uh, it's on April 28th. It's an all-day triathlon. starts at Mountaineer Square. They ski up, and then they ride bikes from Mountaineer Square or from the mountain down all the way to the Whitewater or to uh, Northbridge put in by Garlic Mike's, and then they paddle all the way down to the Whitewater Park, and it's a fun event. Wow. Um, pretty rowdy, pretty fun. Um, and then the Chop Tank uh, will be happening at the Crestview Butte Center for the Arts on June 19th. That is featuring businesses here from the Gunnison Valley. And then uh, West Slope Startup Week is uh, June 6th. There's going to be events throughout Western Colorado. Uh, the Ice Lab will be hosting one of those events here for our valley. Thank you to our sponsors. Again, the Ice Lab, Chamber of Commerce in Crestview Butte, and Mount Crestview Butte, the Gunnison Country Chamber of Commerce, Colorado Lending Source, Colorado West Central SBDC. Uh, that's our district here. And don't forget Treads and Threads event on uh, April, sorry, April 25th. Correct. But you have to be a student. You have to be a student. You have to be a student. Or yeah. help me with the event. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have to be a student. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you all for, uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate the conversation. Absolutely. We need to be doing more of this in our community. Mm -hmm. We need to be talking about how to make these, these uh, relationships work better. So thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye.